Okay, let's begin the webinar tonight. This is uh, Joe Miner, I'm the City of Bowie Planning Director, and I'd like to welcome everyone to this virtual stakeholders meeting. Uh, the item tonight is the South Lake development, and there's actually two parts to the presentation. One is regarding the multifamily detailed site plan, DSP 21002, and the second is commercial detailed site plan, DSP 19021. The applicant is South Lake Partners. Um, I will be the moderator for this meeting tonight, and I wanted to just go over a couple of the ground rules for participating. Uh, all participants are in the listen only mode. Uh, the way that we will run the meeting is that after the presentations, uh, everyone who's participating will be given the opportunity to use the Q&A function in Zoom to ask questions and I will read the questions individually. Uh, we do not uh, recognize raised hands uh, during this webinar. The meeting is being recorded and uh, only the people who have registered are participating. And as well, the city is broadcasting this meeting on the city government cable channel. There will also be a uh, recording posted on the city website in the next few days. And so when we get to the appropriate time, I will come back and uh, answer your, or ask your questions of the panelists. At this time, I'd like to uh, turn the meeting over to senior planner, Frank Stevens, uh, who will introduce the projects, Frank. Thank you, Joe. Good evening, everyone. Uh, for the record, Frank Stevens from the city Bowie planning staff. Uh, as Joe mentioned, we have two detailed site plan applications on tonight's stakeholders meeting. Uh, one is for a multifamily development DSP 21002, which proposes the construction of 325 uh, uh, multifamily dwelling units, a uh, 8,300 uh, square foot clubhouse swimming pool on about 16 acres. The other DSP is for uh, uh, commercial retail and office space. It's DSP 19021, um, which proposes three hotels, a sports complex, grocery store, gas station, convenience store, uh, office building, and several uh, retail and restaurant uh, pad sites on about 60 acres. The project is located on uh, US 301 southbound, about a half a mile south of the interchange of Maryland Route 214. It's located on the west side of uh, 301. At this time, I'd like to continue the presentation with Mr. Uh, Arthur Horn and Mr. Uh, Matt Tedesco, who can go into more details about each of these cases. Gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Steven. Oh, sorry, Art. Did you no, go me? ahead. Okay, um, yeah, so um, thank you, Frank and Joe, for, for hosting us tonight. And for all the citizens that are in the attendee room, um, thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Matthew Tedesco. I'm a land use and zoning attorney uh, in Prince George's County. My co-counsel on this project is Mr. Arthur Horn. Uh, who's also with us this evening, um, kind of sharing dual roles between Arthur and I, and I'm just gonna take the liberty just to introduce everyone to everyone to our team that are on tonight, and then we'll turn it over. We have a um, PowerPoint presentation that we will go through, uh, provide as much information as we can with respect to that PowerPoint, and then certainly turn it over to questions for Mr. Uh, Meinhardt to provide to us from anyone who is attending in the room uh, watching this. Uh, again, um, in addition to myself and Arthur Horn uh, from Chesapeake Realty Partners, we have Mr. Scott Rauch and Jamie Atkinson with us. Uh, from Carrington LLC, we have Kevin Kennedy. Uh, from Rogers Consulting, we have Nat Ballard, Charlie Howe, and Jason Staley. And from Lenhart Traffic and Consulting, we have Mike Lenhart with us. Um, ben Dyer and Associates is another civil engineering firm of record for this project. Uh, represented by Mr. Paul Woodburn, who unfortunately couldn't be here tonight, but is a member of the team. Um, I think that uh, also we have uh, Mr. Julian Curry with us as well um, uh, with uh, with Kevin Kennedy. So I want to thank all of our um, panelists for being here. And with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to um, Nat to pull up or Frank, I think we had sent you the PowerPoint. I didn't know if you wanted to share that, if you wanted us to share it. Actually, uh, Todd is going to uh control the PowerPoint. And so when you're ready to advance the slides, you can just uh, advise him to do that, please. Okay. Um, Thank you. 
Thank you. We will certainly do that. And um, with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to, um, I, I think, Mr. Horn, just for another real brief introduction, just to familiarize everybody with the property, although that everyone is familiar with, but we, we did want to just orient everyone to the project. So I'll, I'll turn it over to Arthur at this time, and then I'll jump back in and we'll go through the slides. Uh, thank you very much, Matt, and, and good evening, everyone. As he said, my name is Arthur Horn and co-counsel on this project. Uh, the South Lake Stakeholders Meeting this evening, April 6, 2021, to discuss the two detailed site plans that we have for the overall development. South Lake is a development that is uh, a comprehensive development, as you know, that includes, as uh, as Mr. Stevens says, uh, residential, commercial, uh, retail, commercial, office, hotel, and all the like. Next, sli next slide. Uh, yes, and Mr. Stevens, well, Mr. Stevens indicated South Lake, you know, formerly known as Carrington, is located at the southwest uh, corner of Central Avenue 214 and Crane Highway uh, Route 301. It's zone EIA, but it's being developed at the MXT with a variety of residential housing and retail hotel. And like Next slide. Uh, for those of you all who've been around for a while, you know this development goes back to 2004 is when we first started. And as you can see uh, from the past, these are examples of the past and the present. The present is to the left, the past is to the right. The footprint has remained the same. The mix of uses has been amended slightly through the years, but it's, uh, uh, but it's uh, based on the convenience to its residents and the convenience for the Bowie residents which are the goals that have been maintained throughout the years. Um, as you can see from the site plan, there is uh, uh, on the, the current one, which is to the left, uh, there's the vehicular and pe pedestrian trail connection to the south and to Liberty Business Park, which is a great amenity for all of Bowie and this area. Um, uh, so they will discuss that uh, in the future slides. I'm gonna turn it over now to uh, that ballot uh, let's just say next slide, and I think the next slide does talk about the Liberty uh, Sports Park, and Mr. Ballard will be sort of the uh, the uh, applicant's MC this evening, and uh, he will call upon any of us who can el elaborate on these uh, slides any further. So without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Nat. Yeah, actually, Arthur, I'm going to jump in. I, um, let's, I think for Liberty Sports Park, we'll have Kevin Kennedy just give a real quick overview of that if that's okay and then we'll um and then Nat can take us through the rest of the slide so this slide's perfect kevin did you want to just kind of uh, provide some information on the on the sports park yep sure thank you very much um just real brief on the liberty sports park as you can see on the slide uh it is a multi-field outdoor sports complex that is planned for the county-owned property just south of south lake um, you might recognize from the map that it's it's also next to the Collington Industrial Park. Uh, the sports facility is planned on land that's kind of left over from the industrial park and it's still owned by the county. Um, and it's the culmination of several years of effort between the county and the state and various um, local private nonprofit youth athletic groups. Um, and we're glad that it's finally coming together now. As you can see from the slide, we've got about 10 sports fields, of which about half of them initially will be AstroTurf, and the remainder will be natural grass fields. Uh, the purpose of the facility is to have all kinds of outdoor sports, primarily soccer, but also uh, have some capabilities for lacrosse, uh, for flag football, possibly rugby, and possibly field hockey one day down the line as well. Um, it's primarily going to be a tournament oriented facility. So they'll be hosting major tournaments, as it says on the slide, 20 to 22 tournaments annually for the first couple of years of operation. And um, we expect it will be a major amenity both for the South Lake project itself, but also for the surrounding community, because there really is no facility like this anywhere in Prince George's County. And there are very few like this, um, even on the East Coast. Uh, so we think it's a very good thing. The Michael Companies is an unpaid uh, development and construction consultant to the nonprofit entities that are actually running the project. 
and uh, we're glad to be part of the project and we're glad to have it as a neighbor to South Lake. And that's all I got on that. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Uh, good evening. This is uh, Nat Ballard from Rogers Consulting, and I'll be walking you through a uh, majority of the rest of the slides tonight. I um, wanted to first start off with uh, the detailed site plan that covered the residential portion or um, most of the residential portion of uh, South Lake. That is uh, DSP 19023. Um, that application was approved by Planning Board in March of 2020. And that detailed site plan has since been certified um, in October of 2020. And it, it included um, a total of 1,035 residential dwellings, a combination of condominiums, uh, two over two condominiums, uh, townhouses, and single family detached units. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, what's highlighted in gold here is the uh, first phase of commercial for South Lake. Uh, that application is DSP 19021. Uh, its status is that it has been accepted for review by uh, MNCPPC as of April 5th. Uh, there is a tentative planning board date uh, scheduled for uh, June 10th of 2021. And this application includes uh, a little over 900,000 uh, square feet of gross floor area, including grocery store, hotels, and various retail and restaurant uh, pad sites. Uh, this DSP is intended to establish pad sites only and to confirm circulation, adequate parking facilities are provided along with landscape and tree conservation requirements. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, what's highlighted in the rose color on this uh, slide is DSP 21002. This is the location of the multifamily uh, that is located for the project. It includes uh, 325 apartments. Uh, those are spread out over five buildings. Uh, each of the buildings is four stories and they all have elevators. Um, there's also a 900,000 or nine, I'm sorry, 9,000 square foot uh, clubhouse. And uh, this area includes uh, an acre and a half of interior green space. Um, the so this application is that it has not been accepted yet for uh, review by MNCPPC. Uh, next slide. Uh, we'll start out, uh, the next couple of slides are all uh, related to the commercial uh, DSP application. Uh, what you see here are representative elevations um, for the buildings that are being proposed with this application. Um, they generically say, uh, you know, grocery store and have retail pad sites uh, throughout. So we're eventually uh, the grocery store will be able to be named once that tenant uh, is signed up for, uh, for the application. Uh, next slide, please. The loan exception uh, within the commercial uh, DSP application is that there is one end user. The, the first end user to be signed up is uh, Sheets, um, and they will have a, uh, a food store and gas station um, located there. And I believe this is the first Sheets store within uh, Prince George's County, if I'm uh, correct. Um, next slide, please. Uh, here's a perspective that is looking down uh, Marketplace Boulevard. That's the main uh, divided entry into the site um, coming up from the uh, future lighted intersection uh, where Wawa is across the street. Um, it's meant to just represent the look and feel for um, that main boulevard with the shops on both sides of the street and an active boulevard and, and uh, promenade down, down each side of the street. Next slide, please. Uh, these are some of the site amenity, uh, site furnishings for the commercial section. Um, you have lighting, uh, benches uh, that all tie together with some of the other um, waste and recycling uh, that is proposed there, along with some uh, planter, movable planters that can be uh, moved around in some of the uh, plaza areas, and there'll be uh, bike parking um, for a, a number of the, uh, the retail pad sites. Next slide. 
Uh, there will also be a trailhead uh, proposed within the commercial area. Uh, there'll be, as shown here, there's a, a gazebo, pergola, um, some different style benches and trash cans there along with some seating outside. Next slide, please. Uh, the next couple of slides are from the apartment site plan. Uh, again, this is uh, spread out over five buildings. Uh, the, there is a 9,000 square foot uh, community center here, and you can see the large internal green space. Uh, next slide, please. This is uh, the elevation of the uh, five uh, multifamily buildings just showing the four stories and uh, the different fenestration uh, of the building. Next slide. Uh, this is the, the elevations of the clubhouse for the apartment application. Next slide. Uh, there are 65 um, garages proposed with the multifamily uh, application. Uh, for parking. Uh, so there will be some uh, covered parking, structured parking um, in the form of these garages, as well as surface parking. And these are the elevations for those garages. Next slide. Uh, the final two slides, I believe, are the, the various signs uh, throughout the project. Um, this first uh, first slide is the or contains these uh, the signage that was approved with the uh, residential detailed site plan, and you can see. Uh, just wanted to compare the or show you how that these slides um, are tied in with the commercial signage um, that is on the next slide. If you can advance to the next. So what we did was we took the uh, the the residential signage and um, added some height to it for some tenant signs. And that's what's shown on the left. There are four um, different spots for the the main uh, commercial tenants to be advertised there. And then on the right hand side, uh, this is the main sign for the commercial section. Uh, that is located at the intersection of uh, 301 and Marketplace Boulevard um, across the street from the Wawa. Uh, it will have a video board there that you can see the screen size is 36 by 10 and a half feet and it will um, you'll be able to change the, uh, the message on that the, that screen. There will also be uh, four tenant signs below. And I believe that's the last slide. So, uh, Mr. Stevens, that, that concludes the, the presentation of both detailed site plans. I did also uh, want to make sure that uh, Mr. Uh, Tony Perez was introduced. He joined a little bit after I did the presentations, but I didn't want to leave him out as a, as a member of our team. Uh, so, Mr. Perez is on the line as well. Uh, but we, uh, we're happy to answer any questions. And I see some questions in the chat. I'll defer to uh, Mr. Stevens and Mr. Minor on how to um, how to respond to each of those questions or any other questions we may have. Okay, Matt, I think Joe is going to uh, read the questions um, for okay. all of us to hear. Yes. Uh, thank you, Frank. And and again, good evening, everyone. I'm Joe Minor, the City of Bowie Planning Director. I'm the one who's going to be asking the questions that you've typed into the chat function or the, the Q&A function. Uh, the purpose of our stakeholder meetings is, is obviously to provide information to people and allow you to uh, ask your questions and um, hopefully get your questions answered. <clears throat> and the value of doing that is that you then have more information that you can take into the public hearing process uh, when, we, when we get to that point in the review. So uh, we're not recognizing any uh, raised hands this evening, only type your questions into the Q&A function and I will try to read them as best I can. The first question, and I don't think it was really covered much uh, for the development team, has to do with uh, Route 301. Is Will Route 301 be widened? Uh, Matt or? Yeah, so um, thank you. And I'll, I'll take that one. Um, and Mike Lenhart's on the line as well, so he can certainly supplement uh, the response, but we are widening um, to three southbound lanes through three southbound through lanes 
uh, along the front edge of the property with the new signal at the Wawa and the main entrance of the site. Um, Mike, any other? Yeah, I'll just, I'll just add to that, the widening will begin along southbound 301, immediately south of Old Central Avenue. Um, and um, we'll continue and, and uh, there'll be auxiliary lanes and then it will open up to a third through lane going southbound through a new traffic signal at the Wawa crossover, which is where our main entrance will be. And that third through lane will continue south and tie into the existing third through lane that opens up today just before Trade Zone Avenue. Okay, that's that's a good uh, thorough answer to that question. Um, the next couple of questions have to do with the Liberty Sports Park, which was covered earlier. Um, and I'll just go ahead and ask both questions. The first is, will the Liberty Sports Park Stadium have a track? And then the second question is, how did you arrive at the number of tournaments and other activities for the sports park? Um, so I'm going to defer to Kevin Kennedy on that. Um, but I do, I do want to just make sure that all the attendees know that the Liberty Sports Park is not associated or a part of this actual development. So the, the site plans that we are we are filing or pursuing are separate and apart from the Liberty Liberty Sports Park. Although certainly there's a road connection and we have some information and knowledge with respect to it, so we're happy to provide that information in detail. But um, nobody on this call uh, or on this meeting actually is representing anybody from the or the nonprofit uh, that's that's developing the Liberty Sports Park. As as Mr. Kennedy indicated, the NA Michael Companies is working as a developer consultant. Um, pro bono uh, for the nonprofit. So that's why Kevin has some information and knowledge, but um, I just wanted to just put that qualifier out there just to make sure that it, people weren't confused that this the South Lake project includes the Liberty Sports Park. They are uh, somewhat mutually exclusive to some extent. So Kevin. Yep, Th thank you for clarifying that. Um, and it is, it is a complicated uh, arrangement with the Liberty Sports Park, but uh, we have the land that's owned by the county, which is being leased to a private nonprofit entity, which is comprised of local youth athletics coaches, um, as well as members uh, members of the board of the nonprofit, also include representatives from Clark and Planning and the County Department of Education, and um, and also from the county government. So. Uh, definitely a big project with a, a lot of moving pieces and a lot of people working together. Um, to answer the first question about the stadium itself, and that's a good question, and I apologize for not explaining earlier, the stadium that's shown on the plan is considered to be a future phase. The initial construction of the Liberty Sports Park will really focus on everything that was shown to the west or to the left of the access road that was shown on the plan. So it'll, it'll be the collection of fields and the parking associated with that that will be used. We, um, a few years to get going, get operating, generate some some revenue that they can save and then invest uh, towards, towards that stadium. So, Right now, there's no decision, no final decision as to whether or not that stadium, when it gets built, will have a track. Um, in broad terms, they are thinking of the future stadium as a potential um, NCAA caliber facility. And so they would want to make it as, as useful for as many NCAA sports and high level high school sports as they possibly can. Um, so I, I would imagine they'll they will certainly consider including a track if there's room for that, but that's all uh, future. That'll all be decided in the future. Uh, in terms of the number of tournaments, that's also a very good question. If you're able to see the slide, there are a few, <clears throat> excuse me, there are a few different numbers there in the three bullet points, 20 to 22 tournaments annually, 334,000 to 373,000 approximately uh, attendees annually and around 60,000 hotel stays per year. Those numbers were all generated by a study that was done by the Maryland Stadium Authority uh, back when this project was initially in its early conception stages. So they, they did a very detailed 400 page extensive study about the need for this facility. 
facility in the Bowie area, as well as the expected attendance, expected uh, number of events and everything like that. So those numbers came from the state funded study. Um, the Liberty Sports Park operators, the, the group that's gonna be running the facility has done their own outreach and their own marketing over the last year or so as we started to get ready to begin construction out there. And they're finding that these numbers, if anything, are probably conservative estimates. Um, there's just a lot of demand. So they will be able to fill these fields certainly every weekend during the busy season. And also they, they believe um, many days during the week as well. So it'll be a very good, um, very good amenity, like I said, for our South Lake project and for the community. And we think it'll be very well used. Okay, thanks, Kevin. Um, the next question has to do with the the name of the development. Is the name South Lake set in stone? Uh, and the the person who asked the question said that they believe the planned name will be confused with a development called South Lake at Lake Arbor. Anyone care to respond to that question? I don't mind responding to that one as well, unless any of my Chesapeake counterparts would like to take it. Um, I, I, I think it's a good question. I, I think it's well, it's a good point that there is also an existing neighborhood called South Lake at Lake Arbor. Um, we believe that, uh, first of all, I guess the, the owners of the project, our bosses, do like the South Lake name for this project as well. Uh, we believe that this one is different enough and will be uh, unique and high quality and that it will establish its own identity and hopefully there won't be too much confusion. Uh, this will be South Lake Bowie. Uh, we are in the city of Bowie, proudly. And uh, so this will be South Lake Bowie. And we think uh, as we start to get more parts of it completed and get some buildings online, it will establish its own identity and, and people will know which one they're talking about. But it is a good question. Okay, thank you for covering that, Kevin. Um, I'd like to just return quickly to the Route 301. We had a couple additional questions about that. Um, I think it was Mike Lenhart that explained the improvements to the southbound side of Route 301. The question is, what about Route 301 North? Will that be widened too? And then how many entrances are there into South Lake from Route 301? Uh, yes, yeah, so <clears throat> northbound 301 will be improved to include a double left turn lane from northbound 301 uh, at the Wawa crossover to enter the site from the south. Uh, and the crossover will also be widened to provide a double left turn uh, from the site out onto northbound 301. Um, there are... Um, or I believe four um, access points on 301, the new one plus uh, the right in, right out access points um, north of the new signal at the Wawa entrance. Okay, and Mike, did you say that there are no improvements proposed to northbound 301? No additional through lanes proposed, but there are additional turn lanes proposed to and from northbound 301. Okay, got it. Uh, one of the other questions related to transportation is how will you incorporate bike paths into the streets? And uh, <clears throat> the city has a complete streets policy. And, and I guess the question is, can you elaborate on how the streets are gonna be uh, pedestrian and bicycle friendly? Kevin, you want to take that or basically sure, I, mean, I, I can certainly address it briefly and then I guess you or Mike or anybody can fill in any any big details on this but um uh, short answer yes we will definitely have bike lanes along the main road we actually incorporated an alternatively located master plan trail so um the original Collington branch trail system was designated by park and planning to run to the west of our development envelope, kind of in the treed area along our western property boundary, 
next to the railroad tracks. Um, however, when we looked into that in greater detail with park and planning, uh, it was determined that, that that construction would be very expensive, but also more importantly for, for users and for park and planning as the maintainers of the trail, um, that area is very prone to flooding and other excessive wear and tear on the trail. So that, that did not turn out to be a very good location. So we actually agreed to move the trail and incorporate it into our main spine road that runs through the entire project. So that, that spine road has the, the hiker biker trail uh, designed to go alongside of it. And it will help our residents and our project um, you know, from the residential side and from the commercial parts of the development use the trail, but it will also provide a connection all the way through from north to south throughout our project and into the Liberty Sports Park. And then from there, Park and Planning has a, has a plan to continue that trail farther south. Um, but yes, we did take that into consideration when we designed the project. And internally, we will have a, an extensive sidewalk network for the residents to use as well. So I think we've addressed both the public trail connection bring people from outside the project through the project, as well as we will have uh, extensive sidewalks within the project to help help the people there get around. And in addition, the, the trails or the, the bike paths um, on the internal streets um, are basically designed to buoys urban design standard so that it keeps the, the internal bike traffic flowing smoothly through the, each neighborhood making connection to that major trail system. Okay, thank you, Scott and Kevin. Um, the next couple of questions pertain to uh, the timing of the development. And um, I think you may have covered this in your presentation about whether you have a candidate for the grocery store, but the questions are, um, if you have a candidate for the grocery store, is there a time frame for the phase one uh, from start to completion? And then with respect to the residential units, is there any uh, idea of when those units are gonna come online? Okay, for the residential, um, as we work through this process of, of approvals right now for the, uh, the site, um, we expect to have, um, DSP approval by early or to let well early summer late spring um, and from there we're going to be proceeding to building permit and uh, site approval for through WSSC so we anticipate that's going to take about another five to six months and we anticipate having building permit hopefully by the end of the year or real close to that um, and the full development of the five four-story buildings will take about approximately 18 months, um, but we will probably have two or three of the buildings open up um, a little over 15 months after we begin. And Scott, how long will the uh, will it take from start to completion? So how long will the project be under under development? That's, that's the full 18 months. It, 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 it takes 18 months for us to complete uh, a complete five unit, five building project um, and have the community center open. And that's what I'm saying. We, we will probably have a leasing center and two or three of the buildings open up uh, between the 12 and 15 month period, depending on a lot of site conditions and, and weather, of course. Okay, and did anyone have an answer to the grocery store question? <clears throat> I, I, can, I can answer. Um... Unfortunately, I can't give uh, the answer everybody is probably hoping for, but I can say that we have continued, just as we said in previous presentations, we continue to make that grocery store user our number one target and top priority for the retail section. Um, I am fortunately not able to say um, which grocery store we have at this time, but we are in advanced negotiations with a major full service, full size, uh, top quality grocer. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Uh, we do have a few questions about schools and the impact on schools. Um, 
we didn't really hear from you in the presentation about that. So maybe the development team, if you'd want to respond, uh, you probably see the few questions here that relate to the schools. Um, why don't you give us an idea that uh, how that's going to be handled? Um, sure. Kevin, you want me to respond or Arthur? Uh, I don't I, I don't mind taking the crack at it. Um, but again, I'm sorry, I'm not the uh, not the polished legal expert. So if I well, let, 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 let me wrong, yeah, let, in that case, let, in that case, let me respond and then you can you can sure. supplement. So um, so again, this this is the this is the process that we're in is the detailed site plan. Um, the detailed site plan is what it sounds like. It's the it's the review and approval of building uh, architectural landscaping lighting. Um, how things appear and look. Um, school facility adequacy is tested at the time of subdivision and preliminary plan of subdivisions. There's been two preliminary plans of subdivision approved uh, for the overall South Lake community. At that time, the adequacy of schools uh, analysis was made and tested. Um, in Prince George's County, although the the test is done, the um, the actual mitigation of the impacts of schools is based upon a fee that's paid at the time of building permit for all the for every residential unit um, the fee currently for residential units uh, per per unit i should say is just just under seventeen thousand dollars per unit um, so with with each home with each unit whether it's a single family detached a townhouse a multifamily unit those fees are paid uh, to the county uh, to mitigate the the impact associated with uh, residential development on the on the public schools but this the this project was analyzed um i think this is in well it'll be determined by the county but i i, I did have a project at the fall in cluster four um just last year and those schools were um one i think were at 84 percent 83 percent and 94 percent so they were below uh, full capacity but nevertheless we're that were below that or not, um, fee structure is, is what's prescribed by law, uh, that state law uh, for Prince George's County to pay at the time of building permit. So that will, uh, with each unit, those those fees will be paid to the county, uh, which are pretty, you know, are, are substantial fees. Matt, just to supplement what you, what you just said also, um, regarding those percentages, I believe the, the background uh, school usage that was estimated for South Lake at the time of subdivision is included in those numbers. So the capacity for capacity planning purposes, the school system has been operating as if this project was built, you know, when the preliminary plan was approved, which as Arthur said at the beginning of the presentation was back in 2004. So those numbers have been carried through for quite some time now. And also um, this, this information probably definitely predates Matt's involvement in the project, and it, it's just a long way back there, but um, we actually made an extra supplemental contribution. So in addition to the fees that Matt just referenced that are paid at the time of building permit for each residential unit, uh, this development also contributed up front a quarter million dollars to the county uh, Department of Education that was used, that went towards increasing classroom capacity. So that, that's a little bit of a unique thing that was worked out by agreement with the district council, which is another name for the county council. Um, and that was done in conjunction with the approval of the original site plan, conceptual site plan for this project. So in addition to the regular fees that everybody pays, that we will pay at the time of building permit, we've also contributed a little bit extra to go towards the increase of classroom capacity in the area. So this project, definitely more than paying its fair share. Uh, as far as the, the school facility go. Thank you for that answer, Kevin. Um, just a clarification, um, is there is there any schools going to be located within South Lake? Um, I don't know. We did discuss it in, in previous uh, stakeholder meetings and, and previous iterations of the plan. Uh, there are no school facilities planned within the development itself. Um, so we've kind of covered it, but we are making several other forms of contribution that will go towards the overall school system. And, uh, you know, that, that's how we're addressing the school. Okay, gotcha. Thank you, Kevin. 
A couple questions related to some of the uh, details of the development. Will the street lights be LED street lights and will there be native plants used in the landscaping? The answer to both questions is yes. Quite okay. extensively, we've changed and we have a street light pattern for the entire neighborhood and we're incorporating that in all the neighborhoods and commercials so that we have a very similar streetscape throughout the community. And it, Scott, I believe we're coordinating the, the light fixtures with, with the city, right? With the city planning yes. department and public yes, works. Yeah. And they are all LED, um, getting maximum output for the to cover the trail that runs down the, the street. Uh, as Kevin mentioned earlier, they're building a trailhead on the commercial site, um, of which will have a lot of native species and planting around it. Um, and that that pretty much is in some of the islands that are in the internal boulevards. Uh, it's not 100% native, but it's it's all very local material um, with with very adequate lighting, but soft lighting for the in, during in the residential areas. Okay, thank you for that answer, Scott. Uh, we have a couple of questions about along the same lines, and, and it really is uh, more related to the overall South Lake development more so than just the apartment or the multifamily section. Um, if, if you wouldn't mind maybe recapping some of the information, I know that Matt had or Nat had mentioned earlier that the total number was 1,035 units in the project. Uh, we have a few questions about single family homes, uh, town homes, um, the builders. So uh, if it's possible uh, to answer that just broadly about the entire development, I know that's not the focus of the meeting tonight, but um, maybe you could provide the background and answer a couple of these questions at the same time. Okay, I, I'll, I'll take the first stab at it. Um, as Nat said, in our first DSP, um, we project 1035 total units um, that are in, in the uh, task or single family development side. Uh, 128 of those are two over two condominium uh, units. Um, I believe for one small section which is 139 units and it's the phase two which is in the lower part of the uh, the southern edge next to liberty sports park and that's that's going to be our first phase of single family um the first phase of the townhouses starts at the north end of the site um and up up there we have the, the 128 condominium two over twos um and i mi believe a mixture of uh Somebody may have to correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I think it's 700 and 700, 700 plus or minus units of townhomes that vary in size from some 20, 20 foot wide rear entry, 20 foot front entry garage units. Uh, we have a mix of 24 foot wide um, front entry garage that, that front on the, or that back up to the lake. Um, and we also have 24 foot wide townhouses that are rear entry garage that front along our main boulevard of Summit Point down to the community center. Um, as we mentioned, we're, our project for the for the apartments right now is 325 units uh, in the in the four story building. So our total combined um, is what uh, 1370 or is it 1360? Excuse me. Of, of the uh, total units of development for residentials on the residential, both multifamily and and the um, attached single family, single family. And um, I guess that pretty much kind of gives a rundown of, of what we have in this with the community center that's that's feeding most of the 1035. The apartments have their own community center, so there's there's combined rec facilities for everybody in this community. They're all linking to that to that trail system. Our builders have been determined for 
a vast part of the townhome units. Um, that is NVR, Ryan Homes um, are building the the 20 foot wide products. Um, I believe we also will have in the future 16 foot wide product uh, that NVR will be taking over and at one point. Um, NVR is also involved in the the first phase of the 139. Uh, NVR and Ryan Homes are involved in the first 139 units, um, and they will be hopefully ready for uh, permit and, and ready to go in spring of 2022. Um, and that's what we're pray, uh, hoping for for both sections of our first phase of townhomes, up, uh, as I said, up on the northern end. And in addition, Mid-Atlantic Homes will be operating their 24-foot units of the townhomes, hopefully at the same time. Um, so they'll be offering sales, you know, in the first quarter of next year. And Scott, is there any website or someplace where uh, residents could go if they wanted to see more about the project, the overall project? We do. We have a website that has been established. Um, it's currently uh, in operation. Um, it still needs a few updatings and we're working on scheduling right now so that we can kind of update that. And we're beginning the, to link the builders into the website um, for, for general questions. And as, as, as the year goes further, we should be able to, you know, have, have direct links so that people can in, start inquiring about sales prices, sales and, and, and just the community in general uh, through the builders. Um, it's been a coordinated effort for the signage and everything. All the builder information will be coordinated with the community colors um, so that there's all branding will be within our, our network and there won't be, it won't look like a billboard out there so that everything is a combined community because this is a master plan community um, in which all builders are trying to make look seamless for as far as the signage and design goes. So is there a web address that you can give out? Oh, sure. I'm sure. I'm sorry. Southlakebuoy.com. Southlakebuoy.com. Okay. Thank you, Scott. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to remind the participants that uh, if you want to ask a question, uh, use the Q&A function in Zoom. Uh, this meeting will go until we run out of questions or topics to be covered by the team. So I encourage you to type your questions in. Uh, I, I believe we've covered most of the questions, but there's uh, one additional traffic question and I'll go ahead and ask that. Uh, as we know, Route 301 in that area is a bottleneck many times during the day. Will there be any widening of 301 southbound north of the 214 intersection? Have any traffic studies been conducted? <clears throat> North north of 214? Yes, the southbound. The question was related to the southbound lane to 301 north of 214. Has there been any study of that? Uh, there have been other developments reviewed and approved um, north of that area. Uh, Amber Ridge is one in particular that I'm familiar with. They are, there's, there is no uh, current plans to widen Route 301 northbound or southbound to provide additional through lanes. Um, no funding that's currently allocated, but Amber Ridge is making improvements at uh, Winter Ridge Drive and Mitchellville Road uh, in conjunction with their development, their capacity enhancements at those locations. Um, and so uh, that's what I could offer. Okay, thank you, Mike. I, that does answer the question. Um, there, there's only one question remaining, so I wanted to let the, the participants know that if you have questions, please type them in. Um, the last question is, uh, will this development resemble the Woodmore Town Center? And I suppose that's related to the commercial section. Sure, I, I can answer that. Um, and, and I guess in, in big picture, it will be similar in that, in that they're both uh, kind of mixed use projects. Uh, Woodmore Town Center does include uh, retail shops, restaurants, and a couple of hotels and office space. Ours, ours will have all of those elements as well. Um, I think the look will be different. 
Um, our commercial space is a little bit closer to the main roads, to the, to the highway, and the main entrance road through the project. So it will be much more possible with our projects to get to the commercial and get out if you want to without having to drive through any part of the residential development. Um, but in, in concept, in big concept, it will be similar. And like I said at the very beginning, I think we will have our own look and our own identity. Um, both my company, the Michael companies, as well as Scott and Jamie's company, um, Chesapeake, Ches excuse me, Chesapeake Realty Partners, are, are family-owned companies, very community-oriented, and both of our companies tend to develop projects to hold on to. Um, and as a result, we have a big focus on quality. So I think this will be this will be similar in overall content, but it will be a unique thing that we're going to be very proud of, and we think it'll make our community, our project, very successful. It'll also improve quality of life for the existing surrounding. Okay, thanks for that answer, Kevin. Um, another question did oh, come no. up. Another question <laughs> did come up uh, related to traffic and. The question is this, is there any chance to bring another access road via Leland to support the other communities that may be supporting your commercial sections, such as Oak Creek and Beech Tree? Uh, you know, the yeah. idea of connecting to those neighborhoods so that you don't have to drive out and around. Yeah, that, that's a good question. Um, I'll, I'll do broad strokes and Mike, you can supplement if you think it's needed, but we didn't get into all of the road improvements that are associated with this project because as we said before, those road improvements are really preliminary plan items and we did discuss it in previous stakeholder meetings in the, in the earlier development stages. But in addition to the widening along 301 southbound that we discussed before, there's also going to be um, some widening and intersection improvements on Central Avenue at the north side of the project, uh, including new traffic signal at Central Avenue and Old Central Avenue as well as um, two traffic signals on 301, one on southbound at the Wawa crossover and one on northbound at the Wawa crossover. And that traffic signal at the northbound 301 side at the Wawa crossover will allow um, people coming from the south, like Oak Creek Club and Beach Street residents to, to make a left turn safely uh, from northbound 301 into our project. Um, also, we're not supposed to promote this as a through road, but Prince George's Boulevard and the existing Collington Industrial Center will be extended through the Liberty Sports Park and connect to our project as well. Um, don't want to encourage a lot of cut through traffic, but that will be another way. Uh, so that, that's the broad strokes, Mike. If there's anything else that you think is important to add, go for it. No, you, you raised a good point that we are making improvements to Old Central Avenue and a signal is a new signal at 214 in Old Central that will help people get to and from uh, Route 214 to the west. Um, ultimately, 214 and 202 converge um, over in the uh, Largo area. And, um, you know, 214 has access to Church Road, Watkins Mill Road, and um, Oak Creek subdivision. And there's there's a lot of connectivity that's in that area already. So, um, thank you. And I had laughed. I had laughed before because the, the question below, below this one about additional access. Hopefully, no traffic signals. Um, I, I can, I can sympathize with that sentiment. Unfortunately, we do have one, one pretty significant traffic circle at our main, main entrance road off the 301 where it intersects with our north-south road. Um, but we, we didn't go nuts with the traffic so we kept it to a minute. Okay, Kevin, thank you for picking up on that additional question. Um, I do not see any additional questions here. Um, well, one just came in about Church Road. Any other improvements on Church Road? Related? Yeah, that's a good question. That's a great question. Um, so, yes, improvements will be made at Central Avenue and Church Road. Um, they are part of a suite of road improvements that were instituted uh, more than well, about 15 years ago that were applied to several projects, including this project, Oak Creek Club, Palisade, and another project that I worked on called Hall Station. 
uh, Auto Hall Station, which is where the um, Prince George's Credit Union headquarters is, South Bowie Branch Library. Although that project's been mostly complete for a long time, uh, the developers of that project still have the obligation to make some improvements to Central Avenue and Church Road. And those improvements will be going forward in the coming months. Um, unfortunately, that job was small enough that it could wait a little while, but it didn't. It, it was of a size that was not conducive to good pricing. You couldn't, you couldn't figure out a way to make it work. But with the South Lake improvements moving forward, we were able to get, uh, I guess, a volume discount on, on some road work that will allow those Church Road improvements, Church Road intersection improvements to be made. As far as the remainder of Church Road, that's um, unfortunately it's out of the scope of any of our projects. Okay, I see a question that came in about the uh, traffic related to the 301-214 intersection and um, maybe Mike Lenhart could describe uh, the answer to this. Um, just north of the project, uh, can you consider a road improvement to eliminate the merge onto northbound 301 from 214 uh, into the left traffic lane? Uh, it's, it's, it's just a request whether that could be considered at this time. Uh, I would offer that um, there was a road improvement that was made about, uh, I'm going to guess here, 10 or 10 or so years ago, plus or minus, where that acceleration lane was lengthened by, I believe, four to 600 feet to accommodate um, uh, a better, um, um, a longer large merge area, more appropriate merge area. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I believe that work has already been um, accomplished, accommodated. Okay, thank you, Mike. Um, I did want to mention that, um, or the question would be about whether the presentation that was shown tonight can be placed on the city website for residents to review. Uh, is that something that we can get uh, from the development team and post on the city website? I believe I believe it was sent to uh, yeah. Frank already, so right. you already have it. You have it, yes. Okay, so we will post it. Um, at this point in the meeting, I'd like to turn it back over to Frank Stevens to sort of summarize where we are in the development process and conclude the meeting. Frank? Okay, thank you, Joe. Uh, yeah, we uh, regarding the upcoming city uh, public hearings, we do have a BAPB hearing for the multifamily uh, DSP, that's DSP 21002. Uh, the BAPB meeting is set for three three weeks from tonight, April 27th at seven o'clock. And that'll be followed by the city council meeting on Monday, May 3rd at eight o'clock. Both of those hearings will be virtual hearings. We don't have any city dates yet for the uh, DSP uh, 19021 for the retail commercial uh, application at this point. Those will be uh, determined uh, probably within the next uh, few weeks or so. So I really have nothing more. Um, and thank you everyone for attending our meeting tonight. And we look forward to uh, getting together on uh, April 27th and, and May 3rd. Good night. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We appreciate thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.